Welcome to episode two, series two of Urban Informatics Over Coffee. I'm Ellen, and then this episode, we're looking at another add-on, uh, but in a different program, and that program is Blender. Earlier this year, Google released that you'd be able to access the Google Earth data directly, and like they're releasing photorealistic tiles, which means if you have a software like Blender and an add-on like Blossom, you can directly import Google's data rather than filtering it through an external program like RenderDoc or doing photogrammetry within Google Earth itself. So Blender itself is free, it's like 3ds Max where a lot of maybe game developers will use it to develop games and animations and landscapes for games. It's completely free to download. Blossom as well. If you just Google Blossom for Blender, it should be the first or second link. It is also a free add-on. You can donate to the developer of the add-on. You can just put in zero dollars and purchase. It says purchase again because they've already done it. There is a premium version, but that premium version is more for its OSM half of the add-on and getting better data out of OSM. So. If that's not what you're looking for and you're just looking for this Google Earth imagery, the free version is fine. So if we go over to the Blender program, this is what it looks like. It looks very similar to 3ds Max. The controls are a bit different, but that's not important for today's tutorial. So you need to install the add-on. Uh, that is not the purpose of this tutorial. There's lots of very easy ones already existing out in the YouTube universe. But once you've installed it, you can press N on your keyboard and you can see that it is here. So the first thing we're going to do with a brand new file that is completely empty, you want to select where in the world the information you're grabbing is. So if you press select, it'll open up a new tab and it'll allow you to select your spot. So if I zoom in to Sydney, go to Engadine and say I'm working on a site in this area, maybe just a house. Show selection rectangle um, and drag it to what you want. Say my house is on the corner of these two roads. The more you select, the longer it'll take to work out but some context would be good so that's large enough if you come and press copy it'll copy these coordinates and if you go back to blender you can simply now just press paste and it'll update coming to this drop down we want google 3d tiles but you can see it also has open street maps information terrain information but this is what we want it also has level of details Top of the list is low resolution and bottom of the list is high resolution. So if we start with a relatively low resolution option, maybe group of buildings, leave those as is and press import. It'll think about it for a sec. Hopefully it won't take too long. You can see it's imported something. So we'll fix what we're looking at. If you go to the view tab, You'll need to increase the extent of how much you can see at any one time. Um, and you can see that Google kind of grabs not exactly what you put in the coordinates. But if I quickly change this to color, you can see that, you know, the trees have height, the buildings kind of have a height, but it's relatively low resolution. And it comes in as a mesh as well, which is worth noting. If I delete this, I go back to Blossom and I pick instead of group of buildings, I'll pick buildings with more details, which is the highest resolution you can get. It will take longer and it will take a lot longer the larger area that you're grabbing. So I'll press import and give it its hot minute to think about it. <laughs> I'm still recording, but I'm waiting for it to milk. You didn't say milk. You gotta get the milk. Better you say that now. I am the milkman. My milk is excellent. I'll put that in my new recording. Is it recording currently? <laughs> yes. I am the milkman. My milk is excellent. Quiet also means not moving around, dear. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to get everything out of the way so I can't make my... 
you really need to survive 10 minutes without making a noise. Okay, good. Love you. Love you too. It has now loaded and you can see that the resolution is a lot higher. So the, the triangles of the mesh are a lot smaller and especially from far away. You can barely tell that it's fake, which I guess is the idea. <laughs> the question is, now that we have this in Blender, can we move this across to programs that we would usually model in? So far I've only tested this on 3ds Max, and let me tell you, it was a bit of a nightmare. You can export into all these different types of files, and 3dx Max will accept an FBX file. So if I export this as an FBX um, and just dump it here, call it test, my keyboard has stopped working, it can be T, it's fine. We want to export it as a copy and enabled embedded textures and I just want it as selected objects and then I'll press export. So with a new 3ds Max file we can file import and go down the rabbit warren of where I saved it here and we'll open it. Uh, all this will be fine just press ok. You can see that it imports the shapes, the triangles, the mesh, but it does not import the material despite ticking please embed material and textures. Um, and I'm on the right thing is the scene color. So you can work with this without the color, but it doesn't look as good when the color is hiding the fact that you're not actually looking at the leafing trees. So if we go back to Blender, we press on our mesh and we go to materials. The reason it's not exporting is because this mesh that it's imported does not have one material on it. It has thousands, it has thousands, like each square is its own material and it looks kind of funky. It looks like this. This is what the materials look like bended around the mesh itself. So there's lots of tiles. And the materials that it imports are not FBX file friendly. So unless you're a whiz at fixing this problem, you're going to be left with mesh without a material. But if you have the ability to call a friend or call a whiz, and in my case, it was my brother, <laughs> and he'll write you a script to import directly into the scripting tab and as a new script, and paste it. I won't go through this because my brother did me a favor to fix the problem that I could not fix myself and it eventually got me to this result where I also had color in 3ds Max. So now I have the direct Google data in 3ds Max where I'm familiar with modeling and I can manipulate this site to whatever I happen to be designing. So it was a bit of a hurdle that I can't really explain myself because I did call that friend. But using this add-on in Blender is a really quick way to get the site. And I would also like to try importing this into Rabbit to see if it will work. And if this house here is my site, Maybe it'll help me model the houses around it. Or you can create fun animations, it's really up to you. But I think I will leave it there for this video. You can see that Blender has a really usable interface with not knowing much, because I myself do not know much about how to use Blender. Blossom as well is really simple to be able to get this information into a model, which you can then manipulate and export as you like to use in all your design modeling projects. I hope you're now looking at the bottom of an empty coffee mug because your coffee was delicious and I will see you in the next episode.